Yeah, do I take a picture? Right. Let's okay. get it to recording. This is really annoying. Can stop recording. Can Time you stop recording? Go. I'm um, getting out. Let's can you go? Don't use it. <laughs> I love you. If you use that, I'm going to be really angry. <laughs> I love you. I'm going to be really angry. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye, Daddy. Love you. Love you. <laughs> I haven't got a busy old day today, but there's always time to talk some Formula One along the way. Uh, Rex is not always a morning person. He'll be absolutely fine. He always brightens up late, but he can always be a bit grumpy first thing in the morning before school. Uh, anyway, with them packed off, uh, I'm out on a dog walk now quickly. Then I've got to take uh, Pharrell back to the vets to have his final checkup after his operation. Uh, then I'm off into London later to do a, uh, a radio show. Uh, but more on that later on. Um, we did a great live stream uh, last night, or oh, I thought it was great anyway, lots of you seemed to enjoy it too, because there was so much to talk about after the Austrian Grand Prix on Sunday, wasn't there? It was an amazing race. Um, the debate over the various incidents will rumble on forever. Um, I mean, the video I put up yesterday around the, uh, the Hamilton Albon incident, you've only got to look at the comments underneath that to see that it absolutely splits opinion down the middle as to uh, who thought Hamilton was at fault, who thought Albon was at fault, who thought it was a racing incident. Um, in fact, I ran a little poll uh, here on YouTube yesterday as well. I thought the results were quite surprising. Um, this is how it's uh, currently standing right now. A lot of people agreeing with the stewards that Lewis Hamilton was predominantly to blame in that one. And that's, if I'm honest, how I feel about it. He could have avoided it, but look, let's not get into that because we'll spend all day debating it. It's great that we've got so much discussion around that race on Sunday because that's what a, a live sporting event should do. It should ignite the passion within its fans and get us talking about it for weeks on end. Well, it won't be weeks on end because in just a few days time, we're back at it once more and I cannot wait. Okay, mate, should we go to the vet? Yeah. I know, sad times. Pharrell's gone in, new policy means that I can't go in, so I've got to sit outside in the car and wait for them to ring to say that his post-op checkup is done. So whilst we're doing that, let's talk Formula One. Um, because in the stream last night, because there was so much to talk about off the back of the race on Sunday, there were actually some quite interesting questions that popped up that I didn't get a chance to, to bring up in the stream, in the show. Um, so I thought I'd just uh, deal with a couple of those now. Uh, one, and apologies for not knowing who sent some of these off the top of my head. Um, I do know that uh, somebody sent a question about mirrors. In fact, more than one person noticed that the mirrors on some of the onboard shots were really wobbling and vibrating a lot in Austria, particularly over those curves, of course. And a couple of people asked, is it not possible for the Formula One teams to replace those mirrors with cameras and then bring a screen inboard, so into the cockpit, out of the airstream, which would be much more aerodynamic, potentially even lighter as well? And the answer to all of that is that it is not possible because right now the regulations prescribe that you have to have a mirror or a reflective surface, as they uh, describe it in the regs. It has to be a certain size, it has to be in a certain location. Um, I do think it's a shame because I think it's a technology that's already found its way onto road cars and actually could be something that you know we could start to help develop and, and, and use Formula One as a tool to, uh, to really push the technology forward. Oh, there's the vets. Hello, okay, that's great. Thanks, I'll see you in a second. Bye-bye. Uh, right, Pharrell's done already. All good, signed off. He's still got to wear the cone for another couple of days, but I can go and get him. And here he is, back again. Right, I've got to head home. Uh, so mirrors, um, they have to be mirrors at the moment on the car, but I would love to see them be changed. At the moment, the regulations prevent some kind of little tiny camera, I'm afraid to say. Now you might be wondering why I'm in a complete change of clothes, and that is because Five minutes ago, I fell in a river. <laughs> um, I popped out for a very quick dog walk before heading off into London. Thought I'd take the drone with me because I've got to use it tomorrow. I haven't used it for ages. Maybe I can get a couple of nice little shots on the dog walk. And it promptly f***ed off and landed in the water. <laughs> um, it was coming down slowly to land, but over the water and just too far away from the bank for me to reach, I overbalanced and fell in. And uh, either fortunately, depending on which way you look at it, fortunately for my own embarrassment levels, unfortunately, because it possibly could have been a ratings winner, 
the drone wasn't filming at the time of it falling into the water and me leaping in after it. But either way, I don't know if it's going to survive. I've had to leave that behind, quickly get changed, jump in the car, and off we go to London. <laughs> I love that he's doing this for no reason, and now we're talking about it on Radio 1. <laughs> okay, I am now here. I've arrived in Chelsea and there's a man you may recognise because he's been on the show before, Andy J. Hello. Hi mate, looking absolutely suave. I feel underdressed. Mate, yeah, but you can get away with it because you have the body. I have to hide my fat with jacket. <laughs> you know, the more, the less you can see of me, the better I've done. <laughs> uh, well, the two of us are about to disappear into this incredible transforming truck that's also a TV and radio studio to, yeah. to have a chat on your show. You are, yeah. I'm really excited that you've come on, man. Um, we've, we've created this because um, we were told when we started a, a new celebrity chat show um, that we wouldn't actually be able to have guests in the studio yeah. until middle of next year. So we thought, well, how do we fix that? We'll, we'll take the show to the guest. I love it. I love it. So we're going to be talking about cars, a bit of Formula One. It's mostly you. <laughs> Basically, we're just going to get down deep and dirty with your <laughs> leg size, your preferred <laughs> pants, how often you shower, why you've given up shaving, um, you know, all of these things, <laughs> okay. and where you get your dental hygiene. Well, if you're really interested in any of that, they can find it <laughs> we could We could say, F1. we've had Nico Rosberg on the show, you've got lots of big, uh, big fans, I mean, you've got an amazing following now. Hello, Mark's amazing following. In fact, I know many of them personally, they're incredible. You've got a really awesome crowd. Um, you need to know more about your leader, because he's awesome. But yeah, of course, we've got some, we've got some cool car And they can there. hear it all on talk radio. Talk radio every weekend, four o'clock Saturday, seven o'clock Sunday. There's there's the Driven Chat podcast, which is all, all, all automotive. We've got to get you back for that. Um, and then drivenchat.com for the videos and car reviews and I'll silly put driving. I'll all of the, uh, the links in the description. So it's worth checking out. It's just started. You're two episodes in. Yep. So check it out. Follow the links in the description. We're about to disappear and go and have a chat. Nice one. Take it easy, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. And there we go, it's all done. Had a brilliant chat with Andy in the truck, which you'll be able to catch very soon on Talk Radio. I'll, of course, let you know when it happens. Now it's time to head home. A couple of things that have come up since I've been on the road or doing the chat with Andy uh, are that um, the BBC have broken the story that Alonso has signed for Renault that we expect to be announced uh, tomorrow, so Wednesday. Um, not maybe the biggest surprise in the world because lots of people have been talking about this for a long time. Even Alonso has been dropping his own hints for some time. But you've got to ask the biggest question in all of that is what is his motivation for doing that? Signing with Renault who are at best a midfield team at the moment and almost certainly will be again next year when Alonso signs. Beyond that, just how committed to Formula One are they? I mean, perhaps they see 2022 as a, an opp opportunity, as a chance, like everybody probably is, but are they committed long-term enough to commit enough to that to make it work? Maybe he knows something we don't about Renault. The other thing that's quite interesting is that it's been announced that reserve drivers at some teams will get in the cars on Friday morning. So Jack Aitken will be in the Williams and Robert Kubica will be in the Alfa Romeo. Now that's a sensible move because we've spoken already on this channel about how reserve drivers could play a more significant role this season if one of the main drivers has to sit out due to contracting the virus or someone in their bubble contracting the virus. So that all makes sense. But the fact that Kubica is sitting in at the Alfa Romeo team, I guess if you read a little bit more into the troubles at Ferrari, I wonder if there's already some thinking that potentially if the troubles at Ferrari or the troubles with Sebastian Vettel at Ferrari, if that relationship continues to break down further than it clearly already has, well, I wonder then whether Ferrari might even call on Antonio Giovinazzi to step up into the red team and therefore Robert Kubica might have to fill in at Alfa Romeo. And so giving him some seat time on Friday might just make sure he's ready if that happens. Another question I got asked after Sunday's race that I wasn't able to answer in the live stream was somebody referring to Lando Norris's last lap and you may have seen the bit of footage released by Formula One which has the open radio feed between Lando and his engineer which is a brilliant bit of footage, shows such emotion between the two and the intensity of that last lap entailed from the garage to the, the car and a lot of the conversation was about Lando 
been given permission by his engineer to use the overtake button at certain points on the circuit. The engineer is saying, right, use the overtake button in short, sharp bursts out of these corners. Right, use overtake for five seconds out of turn, whatever it was. And uh, it was really interesting to listen to, um, but lots of people ask me, what does the overtake button do, apart from allow you to overtake, which is kind of what it says in the tin? Well, what essentially that does is give you a short, sharp boost on the button for as long as you hold it of the maximum engine mode. So you remember Lewis Hamilton talking about party mode with his engine? That's the sort of thing we're talking about. The engine can be operated in all manner of different modes that are available on switch positions on the steering wheel. Um, for Q3, for your final run, for example, in qualifying, when it matters, you will crank it up to 11. Give it everything. And essentially, that's what the overtake button does in short, sharp bursts. Turns everything up for when you need it. When you need to overtake somebody, when you need to defend, or in Lando's case, when you need to absolutely blitz that last lap to get within five seconds of Lewis Hamilton to claim your first ever podium. Um, the engine is allowed to be operated at certain, at the higher power modes, very restrict at very restricted time so the manufacture of your power unit will allow you certain tolerances or certain allowances at each power level and so given that lando had to use a lot more on that last lap he will now be restricted perhaps a little bit more in future races with this particular power unit of less opportunity to use that maximum power mode but i think we can all agree what we got out of it on Sunday made it absolutely well worth that additional hammering that overtake button and it was great to see. But Alonso back in Formula One, what do you think? Good move? Bad move? Meh? Let me know.